FY22 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star than zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. And now hand the conference over to Mr. Suman Katpalya, Managing Director and CEO in the Sun Bank. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good evening and uh, thank you for joining this call on a Saturday evening. I will start with some macro commentary and then go into the bank specific details. We will upload this commentary on our website for ease of reference. Economic activity continues to gain strength helped by a release of pent-up consumer demand during the festival season, pick-up in general government spending, strong public investments, and record exports. This recovery was reflected in the highest quarterly GST collections and improved bank credit growth. The recovery may see some impact due to COVID-19 pandemic resurgence. However, increasing coverage of fully vaccinated population and low hospitalization risks so far have ensured limited restrictions. On the global front, major global central banks have put forth guidance of faster than anticipated monetary tightening over 2022. While this can disrupt the easy financial condition exert, exert upward pressure on rates, we expect that the domestic monetary policy to remain supportive to strengthen the nascent recovery of pursuing a gradual normalization. The budget for the next fiscal two would be, would be to look to enforce a structural push for the economy by channelizing a greater share of public resources towards investments and further incentivizing a private capital cycle. Coming to quarter three, this quarter our focus was on addressing the concerns on microfinance. We ensured Bharat financial operations remain smooth and without any impact on customer servicing or collections. We have completed the internal review. In addition, the bank appointed external consulting firm to undertake an independent review which is underway. The updates of both the reviews, including financial implications, are broadly in line with management expectations. I will share further details subsequently. Maintaining disbursement tractions on non-MFI portfolio. The overall loan group grew 4% quarter on quarter. Our vehicle finance disbursements are up 5% quarter on quarter. The strong disbursements ensure the vehicle book grew up by 2% quarter on quarter, reversing decline in the previous two quarters. The consumer loan book other than the vehicle and MFI too grew by 2% quarter on quarter. The corporate loan book has maintained its growth trajectory after the last year's consolidation with a quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth of 6% driven by SME and small corporate. We were cautious on microfinance disbursements, pending reviews during the last quarter and they have already picked up for this quarter. Continued deposit momentum. Our deposit growth was strongly at 19% year-on-year and 3% quarter-on-quarter. We let go of some expensive deposit given um, abundant liquidity. This helps us further reduce the cost of deposit to 4.66 from 4.85% last quarter. Asset quality. Slippages during the, la during the quarter net of upgrade and recovery were at 0.9. As expected, bulk of the slippages were from the microfinance at 4.4% of MFI book. Where slippages whereas slippages from the balance 88% of the loan book was contained at 0.3%. Our GNPAs have reduced to 2.48% from 2.77%. And the restructured book too reduced to 3.3% from 3.6% quarter on quarter. We have maintained our PCR at 72% and increased our contingent provisioning to 3,328 crores or 1.5% of loans. Maintaining profitability of the franchise. Our net interest margin improved to 4.1% helped by falling deposit rate. Helped by falling deposit cost, sorry. The non-interest income continued to remain healthy, growing at 14% year on year. Our cost to income increased marginally to 41.6%. This resulted in maintaining a healthy POP, PPOP margins at 5.90% of loans. Digital launches. We launched Indus, Wheel, Indus Easy Wheels during the quarter, a portal for used vehicle ecosystem. 
we scaled up our quarter two launches of indus indus merchant solutions at indus easy credit stack for business and debit card emi on indus and bank debit cards in quarter two we went live with updated version of indus mobile app and enhanced security features and improvements the mobile app has seen good response with the user base increased by 36% year on year overall we remained on track on digital along with new initiatives on individual and vehicle finance segment planned for launch in the coming quarter now coming to individual business microfinance i will start with an update on the reviews followed by business performance during the quarter as informed earlier the board of the bank conducted internal review on the anonymous allegations received in quarter 3 financial year 22 we have completed the internal review in addition the bank appointed external consulting firm to undertake an independent review which is underway based on the findings of the internal review and the preliminary status of update provided by the external consulting firm key findings and action initiated by the bank are as follows a microfinance product was offered to provide liquidity support for customers impacted by the covid second wave after they cleared existing dues however it was observed cash disbursements and repayments of arrears took place on the same day which is a procedural lapse the product was discontinued in september 21 and prior to the receipt of the anonymous complaint the standard loans outstanding under this product were rupees 179 crores as of december 2021 the bank has on a prudent basis fully provided for this exposure during the quarter all microfinance products required disbursement of loan with bio, with a biometric or an otp consent from the customer it is confirmed that the disbursement of loans without client consent getting recorded was as a result of a system issue the standard loans outstanding for such customers were rupees 7 crores as of december 21 prior to receipt of the anonymous complaint the bank had charged the disbursement process chain of disbursement process wherein loans are disbursed only for biometric consent except for one state which is assam few areas of few areas of scope for improvement in governance and oversight of the banking correspondent activities of the subsidiary are highlighted steps have already been take undertaken including strengthening of process controls integration of control functions and formation of an oversight con- committee etc the management has evaluated the matter of possible impact on the asset classification revenue recognition and provisioning further evaluation also included factors which could lead to regulatory issues and they have been also addressed adequately the bank will also constitute a committee to assess staff accountability if any arising of the findings of the review now coming to the business of microfinance during the quarter the increasingly broad based recovery in economy was also reflected in the microfinance business during quarter 3 the covid third wave too did not affect rural india as much as urban location bharat financial added 564000 customers during the quarter the member acquisition has picked up this month and as business in, in, in act are improving across india the positive momentum in business activities was also a result Uh, was also reflected in improvement in collections collections efficiency in december 21 was at 93% on overall book and 98% on standard book excluding npas and restructured book west bengal and kerala continue to pull the overall collections down with collection efficiency of 95% and 91% respectively on standard book with quarter 2 incremental npa customers With, within quarter 3 incremental npa customers 70% of the customers paid some installment during quarter 3 indicating potential for recoveries even though we have made conservative provisioning and overall npa base 40% customers paid some amount during quarter 3 the restructured book was at 1003 crores against 970 907 crores quarter on quarter Overall for Bharat Financial 86% of customers paid all weeks in December 8% are intermittent place in December and 6% are non paying among standard portfolio only 2% of clients are not non paying this also reflects in terms of quality of portfolio outstanding wherein portfolio 
current on all installment has improved quarter on quarter from 83% to 92% of standard portfolio. Our 0 to 90 DPT book has reduced quarter on quarter from 4446 crores to 2153 crores of which 60 DPD book is 643 crores. The next slippage during the quarter was rupees 1,239 crores. The net slippage is cumulatively for the nine months financial year 22 was rupees 1,851 crores or 6.7% of the book. Looking at the performance of the overdue book as of now and assuming coverage of 80 or 90% of the delinquent book, we remain confident of the credit cost from MFI book for the year to be broadly around 6 to 8% as stated earlier. We continue to scale up our non-microfinance activities. The merchant acquisition business grew to 437,000 merchants from 320,000 merchants quarter on quarter. The loan book from these customers was at 1,463 crores from borrowing customer base of 261,000 merchants with 98.2% collection efficiency. We have also further scaled Bharat Money, Bharat Money stores from 91,000 to 94,000 during the quarter. Overall, we remain committed to the microfinance business. The Bharat financial business model has delivered outperformance versus the industry, not just in COVID, but also in disruptions pre-merger. Bharat financial price in being a process-driven organization. The focus for this quarter will continue to be on improving field discipline, process tightening and quality control without impacting customer acquisitions and collection. Vehicle finance. Our vehicle finance disbursements for the quarter were at 8,800 crores, reflecting 5% quarter on quarter and 14% year on year growth. Similar to the quarter two, the disbursements are also higher than the pre-COVID levels. Within vehicle categories, disbursements are now ahead of the pre-COVID levels for commercial vehicles, cars, utility vehicles and tractors. The three-wheeler and two-wheeler volumes will take a few quarters more for the COVID impact to pass. Strong disbursements in the last two quarters have resulted in the vehicle book growing by 2% sequentially after being stagnant or declining for the past few quarters. We have maintained or gained market share in most of the vehicle categories except two-wheelers. The vehicle finance restructured book remains stable at 3,769 crores quarter on quarter with marginal fresh additions during the quarter. The collection from the restructured book too improved to 87%. Collection efficiency from the rest of the book is back to normalcy. We see continued improvement in freight availability for existing vehicles along with stability in fuel prices. This has supported the portfolio quality and will also result in new vehicle demand for the coming year. This is also evident in the quarter four so far with disbursements improving further. We aim to maintain the growth trajectory, distribution reach and work towards improving to pre-pandemic levels in the last quarter as well. On the vehicle finance management leadership trust, Mr. Partha Sarthi has identified A.G. Sriram as his successor. A.G. Sriram has been with the bank for over three decades, running large portfolios including commercial vehicles and construction equipment. A.G. Sriram is being groomed over the last several quarters to take over on, take on the leadership role. Mr. Partha Sarthi has been instrumental in building the vehicle finance domain for the bank and continue to be associated with the bank post transition as a mentor to A.G. Sriram. Other retail assets. This segment contributes 15% of the overall book and includes non-vehicle, non-MFI products. The loan book grew up 2% quarter on quarter, driven by growth in both secured and unsecured products. Credit card spends continue to reach new heights every quarter, with quarter three spends at Rs. 14,256 crores, growing 28% quarter on quarter. The secured asset disbursements were among the best in last several years. The segment, however, is witnessing intense competition and we have to let go of customers where risk reward was not favorable. The collections from this customer segment are back to pre-COVID levels with the net slippages well under 1%. Corporate bank. The corporate bank book maintains its growth trajectory with quarter on quarter growth of 6%. YOY growth was strong at 19%, albeit on a weaker base. 
we continue to focus on well rated corporates with average rating profile of the corporate book improved to 2.67 from 2.76 y on y that is equivalent to a rating the growth was driven by demand from nbfc small corporates and sme the slippages from the corporate book remained well contained in quarter 3 slippages at 56 crores this would be one of the lowest quarterly slippages in the last several years a part of the corporate book under restructuring will complete one year of satisfactory performance and expected to be upgraded this quarter we have all watchful or about developments in one of the restructured accounts under litigation our exposure to stress telco was at 30 billion as of december 21 of which funded is 10 billion and balance non funded the consortium is evaluating a business plan and we will update you at an appropriate time during the quarter we sold down one of the ilfx exposure to an arc for rupees 240 crores cash recovery with an upside participation on finance final recovery the exposures have already been written off and recovery is used to augment the contingent provisions the gems and jewelry book reduced quarter on quarter due to repayments and is maintaining its asset quality with zero npa overall the corporate franchise was seen a comfortable turnaround with focus on growth compliant with the with the underwriting framework now coming to deposits deposits grew 19% year on year driven by 24% year on year growth in current and savings account and retail deposits as per lci grew by 30% 32% year on year the growth is achieved along with reduction in cost of deposits our cost of deposit reduced to 4.66% from 4.85% showing a decline of 19 basis point during the quarter and 139 basis point cumulative, cumulatively in seven quarters we continue to remain surplus on liquidity and let go some of the expensive deposits during the quarter the certificates of deposit reduced in absolute absolute as well as proportion of deposits during the quarter the cds now form 2.2% of the overall deposits affluent segment total aum stood at 60000 crores showing a yoy growth of 25% in the same period total deposits in the segment grew by 21% and stood at 35000 crores the growth in deposits is driven by casa which grew 37% year on year and 4% quarter on quarter deposit from the nr segment has been holding off well at 27000 crores the nr market has seen a sharp, seen a sharp fall in the fresh inflows of the deposit this year we have however gained market share this year till date and no aim and aim to maintain the trajectory we have maintained our overall lcr at 137% and were running surplus cash balances and excess investment of over 60000 crores digital traction we have been executing a digital strategy focused on a improving efficiency of existing business b creating new business digital business models c building digital propositions with a wider ecosystem over the last 9 months we have built a comprehensive stack of digital platforms to serve the needs of retail individual and sme clients these include in the smart for investments in the forex for reach and recently launched in the cg credit for personal loans and credit cards as well as purchase financing on debit card spend in the msme space during the year we launched easy credit for business and in this merchant solution to meet banking payment and lending needs for small entrepreneurs consequently our digital sourcing mix continued to increase during the quarter overall 92% of the transactions happened digitally and 71% of overall service requests are now processed via digital channels up from 68% year ago new developments during the quarter include we opened up easy and in this easy credit stack for credit cards to various channel partners and employees at is it gaining transactions in more than 120 offline channel partners we also integrated two digital partners and several more in the pipeline the platform is generating over 300000 inquiries every month with the platform launch our cost of processing per application has come down by 80% as printing dispatch scanning data entries are eliminated we launched an enhanced version of indus mobile app with better user experience and security features the mobile app continues to be rated 4.3 on play store and ibl mobile and upi transaction growth almost doubled yoy 
we enhanced features on whatsapp banking including pdf statements card balances and bill payments we saw good engagement on whatsapp with 3.6 million user register base and over 1 million con conversations every month whatsapp banking user base has increased by 82% year on year and transaction are up 2.9 times year on year in this version solutions a one stop solution app for small merchants saw a good response in the initial months of launch and garnered an install base of 10000 plus organically with 60% of the new app to bank new to bank users indicating wider acceptance of solution offered by the app as we start the media campaign from this quarter we expect a momentum to build in the come quarter the bank has launched e indus easy wheels the website hosts ancillary services like roadside assistance mechanic services insurance which is the first of its kind in the market the portal also hosts the repossessed vehicles of the bank for auction and provides a smooth user experience for every anyone looking for pre owned vehicles this is the first step in the journey of vehicle discovery and the future roadmap will include bringing in more inventory from aggregators dealers provide customer value added services on such customer touch point the vision is to create a wholesome customer journey to complete vehicle ownership cycle and give enhanced user experience transparency and value the channel is expected to bring in niche digital footprint and market recall of vehicle finance we also continue to build our build our open banking platform uh, open banking platform banking strategy leveraging the bank's api live with 260 partners so that we can extend banking services and by embedding ourselves onto platform partner platform now coming to the financial performance for the quarter net interest income grew for quarter 3 at 3794 crores grew 11% year on year and operating profit at 3312 crores was up by 12% year on year our operating profit margin remain healthy at 5.90% of loans net interest margin improved during the quarter from 4.07% to 4.10% the improvement was driven by continued continued reduction in the cost of deposit from 4.85% to 4.66% the yield on advances came off from 11.66% to 11.36% due to higher share of corporate loans and with better rating profile and slower mfi disbursement other income grew 14% year on year retail fees contributed contribute 58% to the total fee income on the cost side we assumed resumed investments in our branch network adding 88 branches during the quarter taking a branch count to 2103 we continue to invest on the digital initiatives as well our cost to income ratio was at 41.6% for the quarter on the asset quality and the provisioning front our provisions for the quarter were at rupees 1652 crores net slippages for the quarter were at 0.9% of loans as expected bulk of this came from microfinance at 4.4% of loans whereas net slippages from the rest of 88% of the book were contained at 0.03% of loans our coverage on microfinance npa is at 95% we also have standard provisions of rupees 368 crore towards full coverage on product with procedural lapse and 10% provisions on all 30 to 90 dpd loans we also carry Additional, we also additionally carry significant contingent provision for restructured loans we are thus well provided on the existing as well as potential npas in microfinance overall the gnpa for the bank has moved down to 2.48% from 2.77% quarter on quarter and net npas were down to 0.7% from 0.8% quarter on quarter with pcr of 72% the restructured book reduced from 3.2 from 3.6% to 3.3% quarter on quarter we have used recovery from ilf exposure to improve our contingent provision to 3328 crores amounting to 1.5% of loans total loan pro related provisions are at 3.7% of loans or 144% of gross npas our sma one and sma two book was at 25 basis points and 59 basis points respectively <laughs> net security receipts were at 85 basis points versus 71 basis points quarter on quarter profits for the quarter were at 1242 crores growing at an 8% quarter on quarter and 50% year on year our crar including profits improved to 19.07% from 18.06% with cat1 ratio at 
the CIR was also boosted by the tier 2 issuance of 2800 crores during the quarter overall i think quarter 3 was one of the toughest quarters since the first covid wave and outcome have have been what we have been communicating we are all not well poised and pivoting to growth as reflected in disbursements as well as collection in the 88% of the non finance microfinance book have been stable the book grew 4.3% quarter on quarter and with 30 basis points of net slippage we expect these portfolios to maintain this trajectory the microfinance portfolio has seen slippages broadly in line with our expectations the update from internal as well as external reviews also corroborate our views the disbursements are now back on track and we expect loan book to grow here on we have conservatively chosen to take the microfinance co credit cost through the pnl or along with augmenting contingent provisioning the contingent provisioning position as well to mitigate future credit cost cycles the liability franchise continue to scale up with reduction in cost of deposits we are well positioned for the upward risk cycle as well we are well on our track on executing our digital strategy we have we have we have so far launched three out of the planned five initiatives indus easy credit merchant acquiring and vehicle finance portal where they are these are being scaled up the other two millennial and sme offerings are planned for the launch in the couple of quarters the profitability of the franchise remains healthy at 5.90 ppop margin roa and roe continues the journey towards normalization and should see further improvement as microfinance costs have peaked while the covid remains a risk to watch out for the implication of the reason base on our business have been limited we are thus committed to executing a strategy quarter on quarter with this we can open for question and answer thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handset while asking your question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles participants you may press star and 1 to ask a question the first question is from the line of abhishek murarga from hsbc please go ahead yeah good evening everyone and thank you for taking my question um so uh, two three questions uh, the first is this audit report by when can we expect it and has any of the slippage or write off been precipitated as a result of any finding of the report uh so the internal audit report has been presented to the board already and the the committee of the board directors who were who were reviewing the and overviewing the the overseeing the the audit we are all have presented it to the board i think the external consulting firm uh, preliminary findings have also been uh, review a status update has been given to the committee of directors and it has been, so i think the, the external consulting firm board report should be available very soon i think uh, they are they are internally validating the report as well as uh, 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 presenting the you know the, the report to the management for their comments before they presented it to the committee of directors so i think uh, it should take a couple of weeks uh, two to three weeks before it is out so that's what it i think uh, what we have done it's not precipitated it i think we were always in my first call itself i had said that we had this provision and we have taken the full provision of this portfolio which was 179 crores on a particular product okay and the 368 crores i think you mentioned that you're carrying separately for mfi this is outside of any yeah the provisions for mfi no nee, so what i no 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 these are for mfi what i've done is i've taken uh, we have taken 10% on 30 plus as an extra provision and we have taken the current the current book which was on current of 179 crores which was current on the this particular product has been taken as 100% so 179 plus 120 or 130 crores on the 30 plus bucket is what we have taken as provision okay okay understood the second question really is on growth now at the current rate of growth we may undershoot our guidance of 16 to 20% growth for this year uh what is your view for 
the following year you're saying disbursements are kicking back up so what what is your view for 23 if you look at this quarter too i think if you would have just seen our growth outside the microfinance was 4.6% so we are back to 18% to 20% growth year on year it's not that if we get a microfinance growth back which will be 5% quarter on quarter 6% quarter on quarter at any cost we will be at delivering 5 or 5.5% quarter in my view our growth is in the early 20s and we will to believe because we have to make up for the lost time which we have done i think our growth will be in the range of 12 to 13% this year and will go to early 20s in the next year to make up to 16 to 18 percent cajr in the planning cycle 5 on the 2 year period okay and finally on mfi you just a few questions so you are saying disbursements are back up but what are what was the disbursement last quarter and what have you done in january so far just to get a sense of I the kind of the january number i think it's incorrect to me to january the december the december results was 7300 crores approximately we do an average of 8500 to 9500 crores of disbursement and we should be back up to those levels in this yes. quarter let's say yes and uh, i am talking only about about the yes i am talking about the the member member business right. there will be another 300 to 400 crores of disbursement which will happen in the merchant acquiring business okay sure sure yeah yeah and uh, this average ticket size that you have shared this is on aum right what would it be on disbursements it's exactly the Your disbursement will be slightly higher i think uh, 30 uh, 30 32000 32000 32, not much of a difference it's uh, a one year book it runs down and um, you know okay okay just a, you know uh, you are giving anyway quite a bit of data on mfi on paying non paying disbursements etc uh just a request if you can put it in a slide it just helps us compare because a lot of others give that data and uh, would be useful to have uh, you know at least the basic data about uh, mfi uh, separately so just a request there okay thanks those were my questions thank you abhishek thank you thank you the next question is from the line of samir bise from jm financial services please go ahead yeah hi uh, we Uh, just one question on uh, how does one uh, tie up the number of uh, sale to ARC, which is seven uh, forty crore in the presentation and around two thousand four hundred eighty crores in the BSE release. Yeah. So if you look at it, yeah. yeah. Uh, Samir, uh, the seven four eight seven is the gross amount which is sold to the uh, ARC during the quarter. Uh, within that 750 crores is the cntl the uh, ilfs exposure which was already written off and the balance is the uh, loans which are sold during the quarter which are the retail and other uh, assets the 750 as you know is the fully uh, provided and uh, written off exposure of the balance 1737 uh, there were already provisions sitting on the books so the net amount is 1213 as disclosed in the uh, uh, seb disclosure and again that 1213 we received a consideration of 740 So that 740 is in the investor presentation, and then 740 is further the usual whatever the cash and SR book uh, split that you receive against that. So that's how the 2487 flows into the uh, SR book and um, investor presentation no- notes. Okay, okay, I probably just run this down once again offline. And, yeah. And yeah. uh, secondly, uh, just wanted to uh, get a sense on the corporate book. Uh, how is the growth shaping up, and from from what kind of sectors? so our corporate book grew by 6% i think on the large corporates we are seeing growth in the nbfc segment which has done very well for us and uh, we continue to believe that that so we have about 4 uh, and a half percent of our book there and we believe that that's a very good business which we are in i think uh, we've also added to the real estate sector two deals were done uh, and uh, we did that smaller amount but very good deals which we did on the mid corporates and then the smaller corporate we saw growth uh, and we saw the growth in the specifically in the smaller corporate at, at about 10 to 12% uh, okay you you expect uh, these the are the are loan disbursements were for existing projects which were you know uh, for existing projects so they were not new uh, entrants into the new customers which are acquired that they are disbursed over a period of time 
Okay, and and do you expect a kind of high teens number to sustain on the corporate side? I believe so. I think uh, the the budget will throw up very good opportunities in the corporate. I think the capex cycle is reviving, and I believe that uh, we will continue to grow on the corporate side. Like I said, our mix will be 45, 55, or and I think we are in that range on the on the corporate and retail side. I think we will also see the retail side shaping up. On the retail side, the vehicle is coming from a very low, you know. cyclical downturn and i think the vehicle side of the business will do very well microfinance there is always a demand and you will see us growing that microfinance and on non vehicle asset business you will see the growth momentum picking up and i think all the three businesses are well positioned for growth now okay uh, thank you and all the best thank you the next question is from the line of kunal shah from icici securities please go ahead yeah uh, so uh, firstly with respect to the uh, opex uh, so overall uh, the opex has been quite uh, contained but uh, we have seen a uh, increase across the uh, board uh, so uh, so uh, do we see uh, maybe investing uh, further uh, and we catch up on the opex or we uh, still see like cost income being benefited at this uh, uh, level quite comfortably Oh, no, no. I think what you will see is we will continue to invest in OPEX. So I think OPEX is a very important component, specifically on technology and people. We are investing. Our branches, we are growing the distribution. We are investing in technology, and we will invest in people. So I think OPEX will continue. But please understand, the revenues will also grow. We have the nature of our business is such that we will control, continue to grow the revenue. I've always said our OPEX will be in the range of 41 to 43 percent, and it will be contained within that. that percentage so to say that the opex will not grow absolute numbers of opex will grow but i think the revenue will also grow to take care of the opex sure okay uh, so uh, maybe the way uh, there has been uh, surprise all across uh, that uh, we are not seeing particularly for indus and maybe i think credit card could be one component of it but apart from that i don't think there are yeah we have a very small card base Uh, yeah. of 1.6 million clients so people have invested a lot during the festival season because of yeah. the large base i think of our investment will be 8 to 10 crores it doesn't move the needle sure and uh, uh, sorry i don't know if you covered it earlier but uh, the right talks primarily were pertaining to the uh, mfis uh, uh, almost like 1000 no, no. uh, i think let me let me give you the number i think uh, we did a right off of 1662 crores uh, 281 crores from were from vehicle finance secured retail was 41 unsecured retail was 217 crores mfi was 928 crores corporate was 194 crores uh, so mfi was 9 928 crores 928 crores so almost like 4% of the book uh, is something which would have been written off yes okay so overall what was the thing if you have to look at it uh, bad in terms of the entire restructuring plus slippages uh, over past several quarters and the write offs which have happened uh, finally on that book what is the kind of pain which we had seen over last 4 to 5 odd quarters on the on the on the mfi mfi yeah, on mfi in particular 1850 yeah. crores is the overall slippages for the over the year on the on the book and if you look at it i think uh, we are at the i think we touched the peak and i think you will only see improvements and i think by quarter one uh, we will be on bau there may be an elevated uh, provisioning in the in this quarter of about 400 to 500 crore but i see that going down to about 250 to 300 and that is the the normal course of the business which will happen in the in that business so it has actually gone down dramatically and that is reflected in the x plus book or the that's what i've given you the data and if you read my commentary i've disclosed it's almost 50% down yeah yeah so uh, next quarter we'll see still see 400 finance then there after getting settled at 250 odd crores uh, normal is i'm i'm just that uh, i'm i'm saying that you will have to see the numbers i'm just giving you i think it's on its way down and i think the normalization should happen from next I think it may be elevated than the BAU next quarter, but overall from quarter one it will be BAU. 
and we have and this is because i'm not taking any hits to the pnl uh, to the contingent provisioning and i'm taking it to the pnl i could have reduced the, the cost by reducing it to the contingent provision and i could have reduced my my pnl cost in pi on the so i i'm not using my contingent provisioning right now and even the excess which i received from the sale of an asset or a recovery i made a contingent provisioning so i'm not I'm not using that provisioning at all. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, and uh, all the best. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shagun Verma from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, uh, Suman and team. This is Rahul here. Uh, just a couple of questions. Hi. Uh, just on. Uh, just wanted to understand the behavior on the ECLGS portfolio. So we understand, uh, and correct me uh, if my numbers are wrong, but four and a half thousand crores was for the biggest amount. Uh, how has the behavior been, and uh, do we have any uh, microfinance sitting in there? I mean, uh, the exposure that, that may have been extended to other parts. So, so let me tell you what is our GCL portfolio. So I think our total overall portfolio is five thousand eight hundred and seventy-eight crores yeah. as of now. And how is the portfolio performing, Ramu? We've had very marginal, very small slippages in loan against property and others where claims have been made. It's not been anything material as of date. The repayments have started because the 12-month moratorium had ended for some of the early loans that it had given in 2020, but second half of the year. So we continue to monitor it. Nothing material or any flags which have come up on this portfolio. And uh, we haven't seen much traction on disbursements in recent times. And, the, and on the MFI portfolio, which you asked, on the product in which we have booked the GECL, there is an 88 to 89% collection. collection efficiency. Sorry, this 89% collection efficiency is uh, on the MFI book? Uh, on, on the GECL portfolio. Yeah, we have a GECL program for MFI clients, which is, I think, about... Uh, it's about 89%. Yeah, 89%. For the collection option. Yeah. Okay. And the full repayment of this, this book will, will uh, happen in which quarter? The fourth quarter? It goes on for three years and four years, right? The term of the pro proposal is one year moratorium. No, I meant moratorium. Yeah, when does the moratorium for the entire book end? Uh, we, if you have... Some of it will end by early next year. Uh, yeah, no, no, March. Next year actually, because we will disperse up to last December, right? So, because of GCL 3 also came in for... MFI ends in March, in my opinion. MFI ends in March, and the others may end up by end of... Three months later. Another okay. three months or six months later. Because bulk of our disbursements happened last year, so many of them have already ended. So we can give you the data. We don't have that real data with us, so I will send you that data into the investor presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Suman. Helpful. Uh, the other question was on um, the... Uh, a uh, two-wheeler and lab portfolio. So for the last two, three quarters, that book is, uh, you know, running down. So uh, when do we see that rundown sort of to start, to, uh, you know, uh, stopping or maybe disperse to start picking up in those portfolios? Rahul, the a conscious decision. No, 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 no. Rahul, the issue is there is a decline in the in the in the two-wheeler industry. We have to accept it. 30 to 40 percent decline, and that's why while we are maintaining our market share, we're increasing our market share. The issue is the number of scooters sold is decreasing, and that is why the book is running down. However, we've seen that turn in cycle down, and I think we, for the for first time, we saw a little bit increase. But uh, uh, yes, you're right, the book is running down, and we should start seeing an increase this quarter, but it will be a marginal increase of 30 to 50 crores because the runoff is also very high. On that, we will start seeing a progressively a great disbursement happening. We did 260 crores of disbursement. Uh, last month, but the issue is that the runoff is also high. We have to touch to 350 to 400, and you will see the growth happening from this quarter onwards. Got it. Got it. Uh, thanks. And just last question on this employee uh, expenses. So last two quarters, the rendered has gone up to 860 odd crores uh, from you know 600 or thereabouts. So is it how the rendered is gonna gonna be now, or there is any any one off today in there? And it will be similar. We've added new people in Bharat Financial. I, I think we are adding resources in the, the cost of our resources in technology and digital have, have gone up. We made a bonus provision, which is a little bit higher of the retention of people. We've also given an increment in January to our people at the lower level. 
so i think uh, all around we we we've done that but i don't think it will it is going to be at that level for some time because it's all the cost which has been added up to that level but we continue to believe we will be between 41 and 43% efficiency of our business correct correct uh, thanks sumant uh, and then wish you and your team a very good luck for the future <coughs> thank you the next question is from lana nitin agarwal from motila lossal please go ahead yeah hi uh, thanks for the opportunity so like when you guide for a loan growth of 20% plus next year to make up for the slackness this year how confident you are to grow the liabilities at a commensurate pace because the mix of retail deposits has been sticky around 40 so would you not focus to grow this like uh, mix of retail deposits in a calibrated manner see we continue to believe that we can press the accelerator on deposits at any point of time the issue was in this because of the excess liquidity which we had we actually run off a little bit of our mature term deposits also so and i think it is only a matter of time that you will see this coming back we did lose certain deposits uh, because of the our, our rate getting dropped not to say that we did not drop the rate we dropped the rate on savings account we dropped the rate on this so i think uh, it will come back up. i've always said our liability growth will be higher than our asset growth and we are continue going to continue to maintain that we have given a 48 to 52% sbc plus lcr and we will continue to stick to that plan okay and uh, secondly we have put strong treasury gains during the quarter so if you can provide some color on it and how do you see this faring in the wake of tightening rate environment no 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 so there are two things in that uh, if you look at the the other income there are two things one is the extent guidelines which have been modified and 240 crores of uh, income which ke, uh, which came in into the into the other income and uh, and then there is a treasury income which come in so the treasury income is around 250 crore uh, 250 crore and then the other income is about 130 or 140 crores which have come in there okay and uh, lastly like on the corporate yield while we have talked about that the improvement in rating has driven this in decline in yield but it's still pretty sharp and uh, last what of- what has happened See the MCLR. We've been dropping our MCLR, and the A, the MCLR impact had to come in at some point, and it has come in. Number two, please understand that a lot of repricing happened because we were losing clients. The market rate on corporate banking is anywhere between five and a half to six percent. We were a, so. What do you? How do you manage your clients? So we had to give a little bit of a reflection on the yield. Otherwise, we would have lost a very good. good loan book specifically in the sme side and in the bbg side and we have got higher rated class and of course there is a higher rated paper which has come in most of our disbursements in happening in the higher rated paper and we are moving towards working capital also in a large way okay sure thanks so much samadhan wish you all the best thank you the next question is from the line of anand dama from mk global financial service please go ahead anand dama may i request to unmute your line from your side and go with the question please you can respond to move on to the next participant the next question is from the line of alpesh mehta from apple securities please go ahead yeah hi uh, this first question is again going back to the so uh, uh, arc sale So uh, what I can see is the gross value is around first and foremost. This is a nine-month number, right? This is not a third quarter number. This, no, this is this is a third quarter number. This is a third quarter number. Okay, yeah. so the gross value of the loans that we sold is around two thousand five hundred. The net yeah. value is around twelve hundred. Uh, so the provisions that you had made on this book is twelve seventy five. That is the consideration. So how is this entire provision consideration received on the shortfall is being accounted in the in the reporting? No, so uh, uh, I uh, repeat the numbers again. So out of the two four eight seven crores of sale to ARC, one seven three seven crores is the uh, sale related to uh, retail MFI all the books, and seven fifty crores is re- uh, regarding the ILFS exposure. Now within this seven uh, fifty crore was fully provided, and this uh, the provisions include provisions till date, not just in the last quarter. Uh, so the net value of C N T L is zero. Uh, the net value after provisions of other loans is around one two one three. That is the number reflected in the uh, disclosure. Uh, Against this one two one three of net 
uh, net um, exposure that we have sold uh, the consideration for that was 980 crores within that 980 crores 240 crores is for the uh, ILSA asset and 740 is for the uh, rest of the book uh, because this, uh, the ILFS exposure was written off come, uh, already that 740 crores is a recovery and that does not get uh, reflected in the GNPA moment the 740 crores uh, is the number that we uh, that is seen in the NPA moment and that 740 crore number then goes into the SR book for which we are carrying provisions okay. so this 240 crores would be uh, would be a part of the recovery from return of accounts yes it's a recovery from return of accounts and it's a part of other income? Yeah. Okay. And the shortfall between the 740 and 1230, 500 crores, so that is that is being adjusted against the security risk that you would have. Right? No, no, that, that flows through the PNL. Whatever is the whatever is the loss on the uh, sale to ARC flows from the uh, PNL in the credit cost for the uh, quarter. Okay. Uh, now the second question is on the what is the outstanding quantum of security receipts uh, on the balance sheet? Yeah. So net security receipts um, as um, covered in the opening remark was 0.85% for the quarter against 0.71 last quarter. Okay. Uh, and last uh, last question is on the on the margin front. Uh, while obviously throughout uh, throughout system we are seeing that the growth is picking up and some of the larger corporates are driving growth, especially in the third quarter, and which is likely to be the case at least for next one or two quarters. So, what's your outlook on margins, or, or, or your view on volume versus the margins? How uh, how are you looking at this situation? Which margins are you talking about? The overall net interest margin I'm talking about. So our net interest margin guidance has always been between 4.15 to 4.25. We are not in line right now. We are lower by 5 basis point at 4.10. But I think as the microfinance business picks up, we should be there. Okay, so even though the even though you are planning, you may grow a large corporate book, but your margin should remain intact within that one 4.15. Because the mix of the book is will under also undergo a change at certain point of time, and if that is where the mix, if it moves towards a little bit towards microfinance and credit card business picks up, you will create more margins. Okay, and and the last question out of the total slippages, what are the slippages related to the MFI for this first nine months? So our total slippages in the quarter 3 was 2,598, 1,341 crores is from the MFI book. And the first two quarters would be? Uh, quarter 2 was about uh, 1,070. Gross slippages, net slippages, net slippages was about 1,239 in the quarter 3. Yeah. And quarter 1 if I remember was around 150 crore. Okay, so the, in case uh, during the call, if you get this number handy, what is the gross number of MFI slippage and the net number of MFI, MFI slippage, that would be very useful in case you have it handy. For the yeah, nine I'm talking about. We'll try and call it before the call ends. Okay. Thank you so much and all the rest. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prakar Agarwal from Edelweiss Financial Service. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. just uh, a follow up on the, uh, that as well. So this time around, you said 980 crores is a write off from MFI. Uh -huh. What would be that cumulative number for nine months? How much have we written off cumulatively from MFI? We gave you that number, 1,800 something. Not write off. Oh, right. Write off would be very less. Uh, uh, write off uh, last quarter was 430. No, no, no. Uh, write off 430. Write off 430. Uh, no, no. 1,600. 33 plus 9. No, no, no. We'll call it, uh, we'll get you that number. Nine month number is not handy. I think we have disclosed uh, every quarter what is our uh, write offs. So uh, we can give you quarter two and quarter three, but we don't have the quarter one number. Sure, sir. So if during the quarter call, if you could provide that number. Yeah. The second is in terms of uh, this, uh, in terms of telecom exposure, has there been any change in that telecom exposure? Has uh, has something been repaid or, or something of that? Yeah, 258 crores of guarantees were repaid. We're expecting another 300 crores to go off. And then we're expecting another 300 crores to go off in quarter one or so. So that's something which we expect. Then the, I think the R2 uh, guarantees uh, the decision has to be taken by the government and we expect that decision to come through, so which should be another 500 to 800 crores going off. But nothing on fund, fund base side that probably get reduced this quarter. So we've already reduced to 58 like I told and we should, we should only get another 250 to 300 crores reversed this quarter. 
Perfect. And just last thing on this uh, provision, uh, uh, the contingent buffer that you're carrying, what is the plan to utilize it? How are you thinking about it? We will see. There was an opportunity to utilize. I was, uh, I was uh, tempted to do it this quarter, but I think uh, we think that we should keep it, and that's why we added to it also. And I think you should keep it and use it at an appropriate time. We will evaluate it next quarter because we want to come at a credit cost of one. Today, if you look at it, my credit guidance was 190 basis of credit cost and 50 to 760 basis point on the Vodafone. We are already at 190 today and 40 basis point on the on the Vodafone. If I have to maintain the guidance of 190 to 200 basis point, I will see whether I have to use the contingent provision. I may not have to use it much, but I have, may have to use 200, 300 crores. So we will see whether we have to use it or we will bust our credit to cost guidance. So we will evaluate it at a certain point of time uh, at, at a appropriate time. And what would you be your credit cost guidance for FI23? Uh, not right now. We will come to it later because uh, We've always said that our credit cost should now go down between 125 to 150 basis points. But I'm not giving a guidance. I want to see how COVID plays out. Sure, that is it from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Suman Patpalya for closing comments. So thank you for being on the call on a Saturday evening. I just want to tell you thank you for being patient with us. You know, we, we, the, the whistle blowing was not an easy for people who had confidence in us and lost confidence. I think I want to tell you that the bank continues to remain strong and we are very, 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 very uh, um, uh, confident of the recovery phase and we don't see any issue in what we said. Our microfinance business is strong and I continue to believe that we will continue to grow the business and we will continue to have a growth which we were anticipated. We would have achieved the growth target this quarter also except for the microfinance. So we are well on our way to achieving our growth target. Thank you so much for your, and me and Andrajit are available for any clarification, any doubt we have. We have not answered certain questions. We will make sure that that's uploaded in the investor de deck. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. On behalf of Anderson Bank Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.